George Wills here, News Nation senior political contributor, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist. Look, people put up with a lot of things. Feeling unsafe is not one of them. How do we explain this? Well, explaining this is particularly difficult for the Democratic Party, which has a problem with having problems in this sense. Since the New Deal, accelerating in the Great Society in the 1960s, the Democratic Party's constant message to the country has been, as government gets bigger and bigger, America gets better and better. Because government is really competent. It is stocked with experts who know how to fine tune the economy, how to take over the chips manufacturing industry, how to regulate this and mandate that. So whenever there's a problem, people say, I thought this was not supposed to happen. Now, in fact, problems are part of life, but they're not supposed to be part of life under a well-governed democratic administration. That's their problem with having problems. To be fair, America has the safest air travel system in the world and one that has been continually safe now for a, a number of years without a, a major fatal crash. It's pretty incredible to think how safe things are. How much of this has to do with focusing on the wrong thing? And by that, I mean the Department of Transportation spending a lot of time and money and Pete Buttigieg's uh, considerable uh, skills putting together a website to talk about which airlines provide free seating for families next to each other. It was part of President Biden's State of the Union that you and I watched. And it seems precious little time fixing the problems at the FAA and with the air traffic controllers that keep screwing up. You're quite right. The American air traffic system is a miracle of accomplishment. Uh, flying in the United States is safer than any mode of transportation in history, including walking, by the way. But the American people have been taught increasingly that imperfection should not be part of our life, that American society should always function smoothly. Look, it's a continental nation with 332 million people in it. Some of them are writ crazy and some of them are incompetent. And there's a sort of normal mess and muddle in life. But Americans are increasingly impatient with imperfections. And that really comes back, as I say, to haunt the Democratic Party, which is the party of government not just in the sense that its largest source of funding are government employees unions, but also in the sense that they really believe that government unleashed means America un improved. So this is Pete Buttigieg's response, to be fair to him. It's really rich to see these folks, the former president, these Fox hosts, who are literally lifelong card-carrying members of the East Coast elite, whose top economic policy priority has always been tax cuts for the wealthy, who wouldn't know their way around a TJ Maxx if their life depended on it, to be presenting themselves as if they genuinely care about the forgotten middle of the country. You think Tucker Carlson knows the difference between TJ Maxx and Kohl's. What I'm trying to put together, and you can help explain this, President Biden on Thursday is going to go to Philadelphia, is going to talk about his new budget plan. It's going to include massive tax hikes on the wealthy to fix all of the problems that people are talking about in government. Yet we hear from the folks of East Palestine uh, in language that we cannot necessarily replay, how they feel about Joe Biden's help. How do we square that? I don't think you do square that. We have now allowed the presidency to become so important as a, con the president's the consoler in chief. The president is supposed to be our friend. All Article Three of the Constitution says, Article Two rather says, the president shall take care that the laws are faithfully executed. That's not enough for most Americans. In our president-centric world, the president is supposed to be everywhere, sharing feelings with us, empathizing with us. It's an exhausting menu of, of duties for a president. Mm. And increasingly, it's impossible for any president to do it to the satisfaction of the American people. Yeah, you, make a, you make a great point in terms of even regardless of party. Uh, presidential approval ratings continue to go Absolutely. down uh, over time. Uh, I'm thinking about since, since the 1950s, 60s, when we first started keeping track. Uh, George, it's always good to see you, sir. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Yes, sir. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.